and the clock is running. Never get tired of that. I'm glad you don't. Uh, <laughs> so, we're back. After a week, not three months this time. No, no, this is good. Might make it a weekly thing. That would be impressive. Just getting our levels sorted out. That's that's much better. I like this. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be comfortable. I'm I'm extremely comfortable. Extremely comfortable. I can hear Mr. Tumble in the background, so it's a comforting, is, comforting is, thing. Mr. Tumble is behind you. Yeah. Is that okay? Oh, God. He, had, he does a lot of signing. You better watch out where he might be putting those signing hands. <laughs> <All right. laughs> got Grandpa Tumble, Mr. Tumble. You, what else you got? Uh, he, he plays... Um, Mrs. Uh, Tumble? No, he's not Mrs. Tumble. Uh, Polly put the kettle on Miss Polly or something like that. All oh, right, Miss Polly. Uh, Aunt Polly, I think. I don't even, I, it's just weird. Um, but they've even got uh, Lord Teddy Tumble and all that kind of thing. So, uh, right. uh, Fisherman Tumble and Fish- Chef Tumble. Yeah, Stalin yeah. Tumble. Stalin Tumble. <laughs> oh, he did. He did tumble. <laughs> he did, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, satire. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, it's and getting it, increasingly hor- more and more horrible people tumble. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's enough tumbles for one podcast. See you yeah. next week, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> what a start. What the hell is going on? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. So, okay. th- right, this week we thought we were going to we were going to discuss a few different films. Um, that have nothing to do with each other. That have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, we were going to discuss the new Star Wars film. Spice World, the movie, because for it's some been, reason... It's been haunting us for a while. Yeah, for, for about a year. I kept bringing it up all the time. So we thought, let's actually watch it and... Watch it and then put it to bed. Yeah. Oh, and then, not them, not, not oh, the Spice God, Girls. God, no. <laughs> and then um, we thought we'd discuss um, The Green Inferno, Eli Roth's um, cannibal film. Fairly recent, but Fairly not... Fairly recent, yeah. and um, Sex and City 2. But, as it turns out, one of the films is just so horrific. I mean, it's disgusting, full of bad acting and horrible, horrible, horrible people. Go- yeah, just nasty. really gory. The nastiest and... kind of thing you could ever put on screen on celluloid, to be honest. I mean, I didn't think I'd ever see that, the but make- I did see yeah, that. The amount of, of oh, the the, Disgusting. the makeup artist must have really, really gone, uh, had a good time on it, but... Well, that's the thing, because it, it kind costume. of looks realistic, but... They're not does, real. It doesn't look real, so we're going to talk about The Green Inferno, Spice World the movie... And the new Star Wars film. Which means we are dropping... Sex in the City 2. Yeah. But insert Kermode's rant here. So essentially, um, you know, as I said, if you went to see the first one, this is kind of your fault. It goes from a group of totally consumerist, obsessed caricatures who end up as a group of totally consumer-obsessed caricatures. This, the whole thing about Sex and City is it appears that it, it's, it's, it's... What's the phrase? It's jumped the shark. It's gone from being about a group of women, which I'm, I'm re- reliably informed that the television series was, to basically being about a group of men in drag. That is what it is. Basically, it's its entire portrayal of female liberation is the right to buy expensive shoes, OK? And, 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 and I don't believe for one minute that these people are depictions of real women. I just don't. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I don't believe that real people in the real world are as ghastly as this. She goes to uh, this hotel, uh, which is $22,000 a night, OK? But she's getting it on the three. And when they arrive, each one of them is given their own personal exotic flunky, who then waits on them hand on foot. Ha- You'd on foot. expect that for 22000 a night, wouldn't you? And that, yes, but at no point does anyone say, I'm sorry, this is just ghastly beyond belief, that it's horrible, fine? Is there a choice of films? So what happens is... That at one moment, the flunky who she has been given, who, you know, who says, 
points out that actually he can only go and see his wife once every couple of months because the airfare is expensive, right? And you expect this to be a moment when she suddenly realises that the ghastly wealth that she's living with has a consequence, that there are people around who have less money. But no, this is used as a moment so that she can go, oh yes, I have to be away from Mr Big sometimes as well. Therefore, it's so you going, I can't believe you've just done this. You've gone, you stinkingly wealthy consumerist dripping with gold shoes, bloody bloody blah. He doesn't have enough money to go and see And what you've seen in this isn't horrible, staggering inequality of just corpulent, filthy lucre, but, oh yes, we both have the same issue, which is to do with being apart from our loved one. Point number one, OK? This As is the old the... trot at the barricades, isn't it? I'm sorry, this is. This was yes. the point at which I started going, then, comrades, come round. Then there's the race relations issue, which is they go to a foreign country where people dress differently. The twist of the movie is that it turns out that under the burkas, you know, under the, under the full dress, actually all those women are wearing designer Dior's that the minute they get in the same room as, as, as all the sexy women, they go, oh look, we're all just as vacuous and shallow and horrible and consumerist obsessed as the rest of you. So essentially the message of the film is this, feel sympathy for people who are disgustingly wealthy and so disgustingly wealthy that they not only don't notice having a spare apartment, not only don't notice losing the income from a job, not only don't notice that one of the people that they're employing is so poor that he can only go, afford to go and see his wife once every three months, not only that, but are also imperialist American pig dogs of the highest order when it comes to become a Maoist. imperialism. Yeah. It is consumerist pornography. It is an orgy of dripping, you know, dr just dripping wealth that made me want to be sick. There you go. We couldn't have said it better than that. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, as soon as we found these reviews, I mean, I, I read, a, I watched another review about Sex and the City, and uh, they put it, put the nail on the head. Basically, the TV series was, was what it was, but the film, it's just nothing to do with it. It's just. I don't want to talk about it because sorry. it's so disgusting. Sorry, yeah, I, I you're kind of dragging me into it a little bit because you know you want to talk about the woman who's so rich. She doesn't. She's a lawyer, and she's so rich she can pay for her house. But she doesn't Since care about her, her kids. She doesn't care about her kids. And then she has to hide in a room and cry because the kids are everywhere, even though she doesn't have to deal with the kids. It's just... So moving on. Uh, Green Inferno first. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Eli Roth, um, who is the, he did the Hostile. Hostile. Funnily enough, last night I watched a first episode of a series called South of Hell. South of Hell. Have you heard of it? It's Mina no. Savari's in it. Um, and it's about people getting possessed. And she's actually possessed herself, but she can bring this alter ego on. Okay. So sort of battle of the demons. That name it, is the main the name is uh, familiar. She was in the American Pie films, American Beauty. Oh, got you. Yeah, the yeah, Rose she, Girl. She's, she's got very unique eyes. She has. Yes. And um, so she can, she sort of got this uh, demon inside of her that she can bring out to battle of the demons. I've only watched the first episode, and Eli Ruffer directed it. It was that's quite it was quite entertaining. I'm gonna I'm gonna you stick know, with it. To, to to kind of start with a positive slant on on Eli Roth, he's a competent director. Do you know where he started? Where? He did. Um, he, I'm not sure if he did web developing, but he worked on David Lynch's website years ago. All oh, right, so he started off as just being being more on his website. What? How do you mean? I think he did like stuff for his website like animations and things like that oh right okay okay so that's why um cabin fever his first film david lynch is a producer on it right so so david lynch's website is kind of more uh, multi-community it was driven. It's not as much now no it's more based on his music it's the same as the couple of couple of website which how that started out as being a very uh community driven uh script new script writers could submit and, uh, well the artists at the time when they saw the potential of the web um, so you paid a, for David Lynch's website. You... <laughs> it's right. He's dropping uh, coasters into the bin. That's I'll cool. find them later. You pay a, like a weekly, a monthly subscription. An artist at the time, obviously, they saw the potential of the internet. You paid the subscription fee, and then you could log in, and you saw all these different videos. That and is stuff, exactly. Which yeah. But now everyone does it, so they don't do it anymore. The Green Inferno. <laughs> the Green Inferno is uh, is uh, it's an interesting yeah idea. But he's okay. He's a big fan of the Holocaust. Um, hang on, let me get the title right. Um, Holocaust. <laughs> he's a big fan of the Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. 
Yeah, he's a big say, fan yeah. of the the the, the that sort of, of genre yeah. of movie making, which yeah. which kind of it, it hit it rich in the seventies. I, I think uh, pretty much those kind of movies, the B movies, um, the one the videos where you used to have the skulls banned in the UK, uh, yeah, those, yeah. those type of ones, and uh, he's, he's a big fan of those, and um, he wanted to in a way homage that, but push it further than he could possibly ever push it by making it as as horrifically horrific and as brutally um, horrific, horrific, well, just basically plain disgusting. Um, yeah, I've seen worse. I've seen worse. I mean, you've seen the Serbian film. I have not. Yeah, uh, and I that's think different. That, you know, but it's, it's different. different. Kind of. There's there's different because this is more. I know. Sorry, I haven't seen it. I glanced through it. Yeah, I started. But... I watched half an hour of it, and fast forwarded the rest, and thought this is horrible. But anyway, sorry. But the same with this film. I mean, you don't you don't watch it for the characters. You don't watch it for for any of that. You you basically you're drawn in whenever you. The, the only thing you remember is is legs being ripped off and things being pulled out and uh, uh, things being eaten that shouldn't be eaten. But what the the problem with this film? I think that that because everybody's just just destined to die in a horrific way, a la Final Destination. It doesn't. It's not grounded in the reality that we kind of felt would be if you See, actually had I, this I, I feel Eli Roth suffers from the Quentin Tarantino thing where he needs someone next to him to say no don't calm do down, that calm down yeah let's not do that let's do this I just think I should be doing something about the rainforest have you ever had fantasies of saving a dying tribe of protecting them from encroaching civilization fire we have to get out of here we are all going to escape. All of us. Green Inferno in the dark starts September 25th. The actors are not very good in this film. No. They're not very casting. good. Especially that blonde one. She's a terrible actress. And, um, like, the main girl's okay in it. She's not too bad, but everyone else is not. Yeah. Like, right, the idea behind it is some environmentalists... Um, chain themselves to some trees. They fly to where did they fly to? Somewhere in South America. Yeah, yeah. Um, they chain themselves to some trees to stop uh, a, a construction site, like smash, you know, breaking down these trees because they're going to kill um, a tribe. So they succeed in this. And as they're flying over, there's a malfunction with the plane. The plane crashes. The tribe then get hold of, uh, you k- kidnap them, and um, have them for lunch, essentially. Yeah. And so that's quite an interesting take on in it. The setup is is fine, yeah. um, but I'm I'm kind of not comfortable with the idea that uh, before they even meet the cannibals, they're kind of being lopped off for lunch. You know, like they're being chopped into pieces before they even get to the cannibals. Yeah, there should be kind of, should be I, one first. Don't they, they? they should have just kind of kept all that out and just. I mean, yeah, sure, some of them would die, and there'll be a lot of blood from one, the, those who actually died in the hollow. But they didn't need to have the propeller guy walking into the thing. No, they, no, no. They needed to just calm down a little bit, make it make it grounded in reality like in Lost or something like that so that, so that the, the characters can come through. Yeah. Let us find out about the characters. Let us kind of care about the characters before we actually start having this, this Cause if that had been, butcher fest. If, if, if you look into the, the, the reality of it, what would happen? Maybe someone walks towards the... Pro- the propeller, but someone grabs them and says, what are you doing? Is the propeller still going there? Yeah. Be give careful. It, give it a context where we can actually feel as though that, that you don't have to go all the way. You can yeah. pull things back. But give the audience that, that feeling as if it's going to happen. You, yeah. but you don't have to always follow through. No, no, exactly. And that's what I mean. Like yeah. with Tarantino, his films would be so much better if we had someone next to him saying, well, quit it down a bit. You don't need that. Yeah, the majority... Who we actually listen to instead of everyone saying, oh, you're so great. Yeah, oh. totally do that. Let's just have that happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. You haven't, you haven't Go got a it. sink. Stick the sink in. Yeah, yeah. So, but, ah, oh, but that's the that's the thing. And we 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 kind of before we even get to the 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 cannibals, we kind of feel like we've seen pretty much all that we could possibly see in terms of limb and um, disembodiment and. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Even with the the scenes, there's yeah. nothing. Different. Nothing gripping us. No, I mean, there's nothing gory that I haven't seen in Brain, De- Brain Dead. Yeah. So and done the, better. <laughs> but the Brain. only thing that they kind of tried to push in there was the um, the uh, 
not the tribe, but the humans' inability to to hold in their bowels when things are not quite right in their world. And when that poor girl poos herself. Yeah. There's no need for that. It was put in for... Eli Roth thought that was funny. And it, but it's not... And that's why he put it in. It's not supposed to be funny. This film, I, I kind of feel as though this film missed its beat. It was trying to be something that it wasn't. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't focused in. It was, it was all over. Yeah. There was no di- straight direction where you're kind of really feeling as though you're... A, I didn't feel scared. I just felt like these, these, this tribal... Uh, Child of Cannibals are really good actors. They're all very. I they were an actual they tribe. They were an actual they tribe. They were great. Oh well, they were actually a tr- an actual tribe. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. I remember reading that somewhere. Oh, yeah. I've seen a little documentary of Eli Roth talking. It was an actual tribe. The yeah. village had to be a real functioning village, and we yeah. found this amazing village in Peru. And the whole village got in on the making the movie, and they loved it. It was it was so much fun. A lot. Of, we had to conceptually explain to this village what a movie was. They're so cut off with no electricity. Many of them had never seen a television before, let alone a movie. A lot of them. Have never left the village. They're too isolated and the village does not have a boat. They have little canoes so they can go to the neighboring village, but that's about it. So, um, you know, for these people, it was, it, even though they had never seen a movie, they are storytellers. So they got that we were telling a story and everybody got into it. And that was the idea. You know, we were cutting up the bodies. I just said, you know, just make it like it's a kitchen and you're salting and they're singing their songs and they're talking. And that's what makes it so sick is that ultimately we are just pieces of meat, that we can be intelligent, thoughtful creatures. We can write, we can create, but ultimately at the end of the day, we are worm food. Worms are just going to see us as meat and eat us. And that's a terrifying thought. I think that's what's so scary about sharks, is that a shark will eat you. You know, that idea of being eaten is this primal fear that we have. And in a stranger, and I think that's why zombie movies are so successful. It's the fear of being eaten and turning to wanting something that eats. The truth is, if we could all just stomach cannibalism, we'd probably cure world hunger. Very likely. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Eli. The bit that really annoyed me is when this... That girl kills herself, and they stuff pot into her. So when they cook her, every, the whole tribe gets stoned. Okay. I just didn't like that at all. It was a was, Scooby-Doo plan. Oh, yeah. God. I would have got away with it if it went for you cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was yeah. just it was ridiculous. And yeah. then I remember saying, when we watched it, right, they're going to get the munchies soon. That's the next gag. They get the munchies. And Did they? Eat one of them, yeah. Oh, of course. I, yeah, of course. They're going to... It's just... Yeah, the thing is, he's just put he just put Western convention into a film into something that should have been purely tribal. Yeah, um, if you're gonna breach serious um, subjects like FGM, yeah, then don't put humor into your film. Make it serious. Make it about that. You know That's what I mean? Because yeah. at one point, um, the the main tribe woman tests the women to see which one I'm assuming is a virgin, and then she finds out that the main girl bleeds when she you know and then so she's gonna have a sewed up have a you know female gentle mutilation that's the idea behind it yeah and they talk about that as a serious point earlier on in the film and they're having a lecture and talking about it but then they don't make any serious point about it they don't do anything they just basically it's up. like oh that exists i'm trying to i'm being political here but now i want to put humor in my film what? yeah yeah it, 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 it's just not consistent no, it's not. It's inconsistent, and uh, you're left walking away thinking, "Well, uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great uh, film for people who were actually involved in it. The makeup artists, the, uh, the special effects guys. They, they, there's a good, uh, there's a good uh, touring here. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. I can, I can yeah, tell I'm, I'm like... a little bit ugh, still on the uh, microphones here. So excuse my voice. Um, the, the, it's a, it's a student film. It doesn't yeah, feel like a. a it doesn't feel like a movie. It just feels like they had enough money to kind of do what they whatever they wanted to do. There was no control. There were no safeguards, and they had fun doing it. I guess, and that's it. But it's it's a kind of film that you really don't want to have to see. If anything more than just experimenting in how to make uh, limbs look real when they're yeah, being pulled off your te- body. Yeah, technically. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, the plane crash part was good. That was quite realistic. Yeah, technical. Uh, thumbs up on the technical, but y- you've just got to balance that with everything else as well. Yeah, the I story thought... was just too inconsistent. That main guy who sort of run yeah. the environmental group, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Oh, and I know he's foreign, and I mean, I'm, not, no, sure, no, no, I'm no. not. I'm not saying that to be kind of like a racist thing. No, but yeah, it I makes plenty sense. people talk with an accent and understand perfectly well what they're saying, but I. Sometimes he was like, it's like he hadn't learned English very well. 
I would prefer him to speak in his native tongue with subtitles if that had been the case. That's exactly it. But uh, you got to remember, this movie is is for for the people who saw, who like sore films. Uh, it's 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 gore porn. It's torture porn. Well, that's and, what he, uh, he did. And, and, Hostile, and, didn't he? Maybe and you should. Torture porn doesn't have subtitles. Oh, oh, does oh. it? Oh, does it? Hang on. No, I'm just thinking. The Serbian film. No, I mean, but well, then that it, does no, have but not native, native. I'm talking about native. Uh, no, I was just subtitles. trying to think. That seems quite a profound. Torture porn doesn't have subtitles. It's quite a profound statement. Un- unless know, it's I native. Like it. I'm, I'm native. I should add, it, it doesn't. Um, torture porn does not have native subtitles. In in other words, subtitles can be added to a film later on yeah. uh, in post. But the actual decision to have subtitles, such as in um, Close Encounters with the uh, the guy who saw the, so, the sun came out. What would have liked? Yeah, if um, that the the leader of the environmental, uh, the the environmental group, spoke in his native tongue with subtitles, but the rest of the cast didn't acknowledge it at all, just talked to him like he was talking English. That would have oh, been brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah. Meta. Keep it, me- yeah, yeah. I can That'd see been that. Good. So yeah. next, well, yeah. So <laughs> Green Inferno. I mean, do you, I'm not going to do the recommendation thing, but it's just. It's only. Is it worth watching though? Is it worth spending your time to go and watch it? I'd go see Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, why? I'd. It's it's like a love letter to those films. If you want to see it done well, I'd go watch those films. Yeah, it's It's... inconsistent and um, it's nothing I've never seen before. Even on the technical level, I've still seen it done in the seventies just as well as that. You you got to look at your own film objectively and say, have I achieved what I wanted to achieve, or am I just having fun here? I, but that's it. That's the point. That's when yeah. they need someone next to them to say, no, don't, no, 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 don't do no. that. Come on, let's rein it back. But if they're you know really like. fans, if they're really fans, then they're obviously not seeing it in the same way that everybody else is seeing it. The thing with On Eli screen. Roth is, I'm not convinced he can do better. No, this is it. I think yeah. he technical technically he's a good director. I think he knows how he to play cameras. Film. Yeah, yeah. I just when he's working from his own script, nah, not so, not yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. He, he needs he needs guidance. Yeah. He needs guidance, and he needs to tone down, and he needs to kind of. But I think he's maybe he's too afraid that people are going to get bored. Maybe he's got too much pressure. Maybe you know these things are. Well, maybe he's just full of himself, and he's the, just convinced that whatever knows? decision he makes is right. Yeah. He yeah, turned up. He was yeah. in the Glorious Bastards. He acted in that, and he can't act. Yeah. So, but and that's uh, Quentin again saying, having a per- not having the person next to him say, "No, calm down. He can't act. Yeah. You've got Brad Pitt. He's brilliant next to that." What Maybe it's doing? ego just overriding his own judgment. Who knows? Who knows? So, okay, so Green Inferno. You know, if you want to, you can. But I would. I'd rather just watch watch uh, the original seventies gore flicks. Right. Are we saving Star Wars for the last? Let's save the big blast to last. Right, okay, then. Are you feeling okay Are about... we really going to talk about this, Phil? Let's do it. Come okay. on. We've gone from cannibals to um, yeah, British I'll... cannibals. To, yeah, more. <laughs> to more... Uh, right. Le- yeah. No, okay. no, no, no let's, let's start as we mean to go on. Um, this, this is Spice Girls. This is the trailer. They performed for royalty and entertain millions the world over. But now, they're making... Got any paper? <laughs> a movie. <laughs> Columbia Pictures presents The Spice Girls in their first film, Spice World. If you want to be my lover. Is my dress too short? No. I wanna, I wanna really, really, really wanna this film is not yet rated. That happened. Spice World, the movie. Yes. It was uh, out in, what what year? Is it 1995? I thought you said 97. 97, yes it was. Yeah. yeah of course it was. <laughs> that, that year of culture. <laughs> it was the year, yeah. I was in drama school, not having sex. Yeah, I was in music college, having lots of sex. <laughs> is, that, is that the difference? <laughs> drama school, no sex, music college... I, I don't know to be honest yeah. maybe I missed the point of school um, okay so here we go 
Spice World the movie. Now, the, the reason why we're reviewing this is, of course, because we've had references before. We've been kidnapped by the Spice Girls. Yeah, they kidnapped us once. Yeah, and it was just horrific. And, yeah, uh, we had to. I'm not, I'm not going into what we had to do to escape. Yeah, just, just listen to episode 13. <laughs> and we'll start with 12, 13, and, and yep. then finish We were with talking with Eli Roth, where um, he doesn't have the guy next to him and says, No, don't do that. We <laughs> need one. We needed that one. <laughs> 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 okay right so the spice girls are, um, <laughs> they've, spi- yeah. they've got, they've got um, a big gig coming up that I've got to rehearse for and it's being uh, published all around the world the whole it's going to be this global phenomenon and um, they've got to they've got to um, prepare for it but a whole host of things go wrong <laughs> I think <laughs> Yeah, well, if we just kind of uh, put put the film into the context of what it is, Spice World, the movie, is a, um, a film about the Spice Girls in this little slice of their life, doing, uh, yeah, preparing for a gig, um, a massive worldwide gig that's actually uh, si- simulcast, simulcast um, on every single television it seems that everybody actually ends up watching it at the end yeah um but uh, like you said there's a, there's kind of trials and tribulations there's like an american um um a couple of american producers who are trying to kind of make it make it um i don't know what they're doing what's george went and that other guy trying to do because we just seem to cut to them a few times and they say amazing things about what the spice girls could be and then um, we cut cut away to the journalist who just wants to get the scope. Is that the thing? Is what they're having a meeting about yeah. what happens in the film? Mm-hmm. Uh, is, does the film exist? Or is they are they just talking about what would happen in this film? It, yeah, it, it, it's a little bit odd because you've got Richard E. Grant, who's the manager. Yeah. Um, in this in this kind of uh, fictionalised Curb Your Enthusiasm version of... Uh, Spice World. Excuse me to put those two things together. <laughs> but, uh, I'm yeah. I'm trying to find every cameo in Spice World, the movie, at the minute, because there was a lot. But, yeah, so you've got Richard, Richard E. Grant is managing the Spice Girls on this tour, and they're in Britain, of course, um, because, yeah, it's easier to film there. Um, the reason for this film is really to, to, to service the fans. There's no other reason for this movie to be out there. Right, okay. Let's talk about that. Because who are the fans? Who is this aimed at, this film? Kids. Children. The the children, yes. Definitely. This is definitely a children's film. Of course. Okay, so... So let's reference all those uh, those inappropriate uh, moments. At one point, Ginger Spice brings a kid out of a coma at the promise of taking her boobs out. Um, The When she's about to... uh, She goes into labour... And they don't know what to do with the friend. Sorry, it goes into labour, and they say, "Close your legs." And then they said, "She should have done that nine months ago." Yeah. What? I, d- d- yeah, kids movie. Yeah. What else was there? I remember commenting on it. I'm just. Oh. He sounds like a very concerned parent. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of yeah. There's probably a lot of things. There's. Um... Well, yeah, just just the actual idea of them being, um, they had a stalker in the night time that came into their house and was trying to get the scope, get photographs. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, he came he out of the toilet at one point. Came out of a toilet, yeah. But the, it's, but if you think about kids these days, well, even back in 1995, what did you know as a 13-year-old girl? <laughs> what I knew as a 13-year-old girl was, um, girls do tend to be a little bit more forward than men. The the concept of of breasts being what they are, but but being used as a misogynist vision for men, mm. that men uh, I mean, because they they must understand that early on, they're talking about it as twelve year olds, thirteen year olds. We Is just it don't appropriate know about it. to have that in a film aimed at children? The, now that's that is the question. Is it appropriate I, to kind of? I don't think so. You're right. But uh, at at this time, you, you kind of we kind of have to think. Well, they probably already know about all this stuff anyway. Here's a list of people that are in this film. Okay. Okay. We've got the Spice Girls. I'm not going to tell you about them. So we've got Richard E. Grant, uh-huh. Roger Moore, which yep. I think is the best part of the film. Well, He's he really plays good. a villain uh, in, in uh, you know. Is he a villain? I thought he was, he was not really a villain. He sort of just controls the... He was trying to be uh, the, the the guy who's in control of the of the dark. You know, the, he's, he's in a room with a cat 
with monitors around him making conversation over a, over a, a speakerphone. Right. Okay. Well, we've Sounds got reeks of uh, of James Bond villain. Meatloaf. Yeah. Is the driver. The Meatloaf driver. is the but Meatloaf. You heard that. That's people. okay. Meatloaf. Richard O'Brien is the photographer. We've got Fair Al- enough. Alan Cumming. Good for him. Uh, Michael Barrymore is Mr. Step. Yes. Yeah. Jules Holland is the musical director. Um, Kevin Allen. Yeah, good for Peter him. Peter Sissons. Neil Malarkey. Richard Bryars. Dominic West. Oh, Bill yeah. Peterson. Uh-huh. Jonathan Ross. Elvis Costello. Elton John. Bob Geldof. Scary does Bob Geldof's uh, 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 Bob Hoskins. Jennifer Saunders. Hugh Laurie's in it. Stephen Fry's in it. I mean... Yeah, I mean... What, it, it, what, what did the director or the writers have on these people? Or is it just, oh, come on, everyone loves the, the Spice it, Girls. Think about the Spice Girls at that moment. They were the biggest thing. They, they were guaranteed to be put... This movie was guaranteed to pull in a, a massive audience. Granted, but you don't need all those people to do you it. And don't. the people that did it didn't need to be in a film like they that. They didn't need to, but then again, is is this just... It, it's it's odd, isn't it? Okay, when you when you think about it, you know this this what is this film? Is this film really? It, it's not doing fan service if it's if they're pulling all those people in. If they're pulling all those people in, it will just be about the Spice Girls, and they just have these quirky characters that they meet along the way. But the cameo, the level of the cameo, I see what you mean. Uh, is it what 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 what's the yeah yeah what's the deal? What's the pull? To, what's the pulse what, of this? What they, they, I, they wouldn't have made much money out of it. Um, they probably so, would have done it for free. Yeah. So why? Yeah, tell me about the cameo roles. A lot of who did the casting. How do you persuade so many familiar faces? Yeah. Persuade? What are you talking about? Persuade? Yeah. They we we, to. Uh, we did have a dream cast, didn't we? There was Marlon Brando on there and yeah. Elvis. Monroe. Yeah, but they, unfortunately, they you know, didn't make it. No. But we, I think we just we obviously we looked through what we, we what we were doing and we just picked the the best people for the part really and and the people that fitted with it. You know, there was lots of people that wanted to be in it, actually, which we were quite proud of, and but the people who there wasn't to room. Money. I think a lot of the people that are in the cast we'd actually met before, and, and the old saying is you like, you know, you want to work with people that you like, you know, you, you know that you've got a good relationship with, and we'd, you know, we'd met a few of those people along the way on our travels. Obviously, we met quite a few people, so, you yeah. know, they've Obviously, we've met quite a few people. We are, we are. Obviously, we've met quite a few people, we have, girls. We did bribe the children and say, come on, let mum and <laughs> yeah, that, that was the Achilles And you can come along. <laughs> Every actor, we just use their key <gasps> seal, their child. Did they just like the girls, like what they stood for? Because I'm all for, like, girl power. Well, you have to drop the fellows over in England and come on. I don't yeah. think so. Pick up some guys. Yeah. 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 Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. This is about... This is about girl power. This is not about picking up guys. This is about girl power. <laughs> Have you got girl power, Eden? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask you about, because I know you represent girl power. Tell us about it. It's, it's about movement. spreading a positive vibe, kicking it for the girls. Having and a laugh. Yeah. It's yeah. not about picking up guys. We don't need men to control our lives. We control our lives anyway. That's what I'm saying. Pick up some American men who you can control. <laughs> no. What, what, you, what, you haven't you got it. it. You, you need controlling then, speaking on behalf of American men. Um, yeah, yeah. Girls getting paid as much and as to men be honest, and I think feminism. The spice, and yeah. they, they stood up for that a little bit. And at least the Spice Girls are a lot more, uh, um, uh, they're, they're a lot more appropriate than what's recently out there. Yeah, um, yeah. In, ter- in terms of uh, you know, they all had their own image. They didn't all look the same, and they you know. Uh, and I suppose they didn't yeah. have to wear virtually nothing. It's weird in the Spice World. The movie is nothing to really. You can't really categorize it because you've got it as as this fan service um, merchandise. It's merchandise, and hanging off that merchandise, you've got all these cameos. Those are the only two things that are kind of standing out from this movie. There's there's virtually no story other than the fact that they are going on this journey, and of course they have the typical their friend is going to have a baby, and uh, let's have the rush to the hospital scene and let's have the birth and um, yeah and the, how and important then, is not to leave your friends behind and uh, stay yeah. by, behind you beside your friend yeah which admirable yeah. and then the end of the concert which is kind of inevitable so there's really nothing to glean from this movie other than the fact that it exists and. Then there are people in it who are famous all around. It's it's uh, 
Is it a song sheet of being British? Is it about being British? No, absolutely not. No. I, I would say they deal with women's issues a lot better than Eli Roth does in The Green Inferno. And in Sex and the City. And oh, by far, yeah. Far worse. Yeah, the, yeah. the film, not the series. I, I, I have to give the series a bit more credit because it was a little bit more grounded in reality. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, I mean... But but, not, not, but but I mean the, the, we got five women here who are who for a long time for over a decade represented British pop um, culture, mm. and uh, I think they did it very well. They didn't go off the rails. They didn't lose it. They kept they they remained consistent. Yeah, they I, matured as well. They started off being kind of like girly and poppy, and then they kind of started to dress a little bit more. Um, they, they wore pantsuits by the end of it, you know, and mm. so they were they were kind of like uh, you could see kind of a, a change of maturity between them. Apart all. from like Ginger wearing that Union Jack dress, I don't think they were ever sort of like Hello, we're Ki- Hello Kitty. We're so British. Yeah, hey. I think they were more about strong women. Yes, which is great. And That's if you it. can do, you can make a global awareness of strong women and um, women's rights, then. I'm all for it. Yeah. It's better than Green Inferno. Very much so. And, in that uh, respect. In it's that not respect. filmed as well as it, but, you know, it's yeah, I mean, a better story. But I actually, I wasn't, you know, when you when you kind of watch a film like this and you think, oh, no, I don't want to have to watch this. It it actually isn't as bad as everybody thinks it, it makes it out to be. And I think that Spice Girls yeah, fans you're never will be bored. a little bit. No, you're never bored. It is actually something. very entertaining. And, and even though like, you're going, well, oh, there's aliens now, okay. <laughs> it's and like... it's fine. It's like, because at the same time, they had the S Club 7 um, did videos as they well. They had a TV they did, series, S Club a, 7. A, yeah, which I thought was really good. I liked those characters. though they were just, But they just kept it can, kind can of... Can we make a watermark of just this, this time? Well, you just said the S Club 7 series is really good. <laughs> 37 minutes. Okay. S Club 7 series was actually really good <laughs> for kids. But, you know, I had a crush on Joe. I couldn't help it. Um, I never saw him. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So yeah, uh, the, so S Club Seven were, was a really good series for kids, and um, for kids, for kids, yeah. yeah. And you know, when it was on Saturday morning, I couldn't help but watch it. But you're intrigued, and it's exciting. It's all it is is really just a fictionalized tour video, and that's what uh, Spice Girls is—is is a fictionalized tour video. Yeah, yeah. and um, with a concert at the end, and I I think that that's kind of. Yeah, you know how you get uh, concerts where they have that little bit of in the beginning where they show the, uh, the 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 people backstage getting ready and doing all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is like the opposite of this, where they basically the whole movie is that with a little bit of concert at the end. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like the Beatles' "Hard Day's Night" thing, kind of thing. Maybe they had aspirations. Maybe they really, <laughs> in, in their mind, that's how it was pitched. Um, but of course, they're not the Beatles. They're the Spice Girls. And, yeah. um, but yeah, it still boggles me why Stephen Fry and all those those great actors popped up. I can imagine Jonathan Ross being in it because yeah. that's the sort of thing he'd do. But Michael Barrymore really had nothing to do, and I think he needed a a, a pick me up maybe because of his uh, his career at the time. Yeah. But other than that, there was yeah, there must have been some interesting deals going on somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but we, shall we? Uh, yeah. Shall we let it let it go as it is? I well, mean, that's, that's, there it is. Spice Girls. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. So now we've got the biggies out of the way with. We'll talk about a small independent film called Star Wars The Force Awakens. Yeah, let's get into that. Yeah. Wow. Go on. <laughs> Here's the trailer. There are stories about what happened. It's true. Finish what you started. Get ready! For what? Well, well, whiz. Boom, boom. Hey, Chewie, we're home. <laughs> So there we go. Yeah, that was a great uh, trailer. Yeah, was a um, so, 
Okay, so let, let's uh, let, let, let's kind of backtrack a bit. When did you first hear about this being made as as a as a new film that J.J. Abrams was going to make Star Wars? When? Well, I don't know specifically when. I heard the news. I couldn't give you a date, <laughs> but I remember being excited. July the fourth, nineteen. <laughs> no. no, I remember because yeah. I had obviously Disney bought the rights to Star Wars. George for, Lucas had severe negotiations yeah, for a lot of money. Um, which they probably made back already. Yeah, but um, oh, they have done. They, they had the best quarter that they've ever had. I've yeah. heard this uh, new one. I'm not surprised. And um, yeah, so I was quite excited because I like J.J. Abrams as a director. We had a, a, a feeling of hope. I think. Yeah, a new hope. A new hope. We had a we had a new hope, <laughs> which is kind of ironic because the old hope was pretty good, and the new hope is actually okay. Um, and- yeah, I mean, uh, you went to go and see it in December. It did. I was very excited. Everyone told me how amazing did, it was. Did you have any doubts, though? Did you have it in your mind that maybe this was going to be a Phantom Menace? No, I didn't think it was going to be Phantom Menace, but um, I was very excited because friends that I respect their opinion of a lot were bowled over by it. Yeah. I wasn't as much. No. It didn't really... Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't like. I don't want this to sound like I'm some elitist knob, right? Because I've not liked any of the films we've talked about. I like Star Wars. I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's that great. It it comes with a lot of uh, a lot of spectacle, a lot of feeling, a, a lot of feeling. I mean, Star Wars is is culturally ingrained in all of us. It's a part of our lives, and I think that no matter what, no, no matter what, whenever you go in to watch Star Wars and you see those credits coming up, you, there's something that changes in your mind and your brain. It's like it's like a drug. It's a feeling. There, there, um, there, is, then, there is no feeling in the world when it comes up a long time ago. Yes. Like, far, far away. I'm Boom. about to watch a Star Wars. You're film. there. Yes. Yeah, and you haven't seen this footage before, so everybody. Yeah. So everything. And it was really good yeah. to have the words scrolling, and there was no talk of trade unions and all that yeah, rubbish. That, that was, was nice. Right. Yeah, it was yeah, personal. It was, just, it was yeah. about finding Luke. Luke's disappeared. We can't yeah. find him. Yeah, which is which is good. And I think that all the stuff we did in the Return of Jedi made no difference. Every, everything in Star Wars, yeah, on, yeah, everything's the same. Everything's the same. You know, we, we're you know, it's, it's, it, you could say it rhymes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you you kind of know when you start to see things that are iconic within the context, within the subtext of Star Wars, you can't help but kind of go on the ride. It is a ride, um, but but then you're supposed to watch it in the cinema and leave it behind. You're not supposed to think about it. That's the whole trick about Star Wars, I think. I think Star Wars is one of those things that, you know, if you if you if you went to uh was it um Disney, Disneyland and you watched the Honey I blew up the audience Honey I shrunk the audience thing. Yeah. If you came out of that and started to pick it apart, then you find all kind of things wrong with it. Um, it's a ride. You go in, you 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 go on it, you leave it, you leave it behind, and say that was nice. Let's go get some food. I don't um, know though, because but with Star Wars, I, Star Wars films have been picked apart more than pretty much any other film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but that's because the first trilogy set up something. I mean, okay, yeah, but people talk bad about Return of the Jedi because of the because of the uh, Ewoks, but. You know, as it is, the the trilogy itself was in the original trilogy. We grew up with it and we love it. We could watch it at any time, and it it is ingrained in our blood. It's, it is. It's there. Um, but then when Phantom Menace came about, there was this energy, this feeling that it was going to be the, the continuation or the backstory at least, yeah. and it was going to be. Uh, it, it's it's almost like in the religious imprint. It's like going to it's like going to something and expecting it to be equal to everything that has happened before yeah it didn't the whole world was confused the whole world didn't know what to make of it they thought they had to love it so they went to see it eight times over because they wanted to figure out what that am i missing the point am i is it because i'm now 30 years older so how, how many years was it 20 years after probably about 20 years yeah after. well no 10 yeah nine yeah 1996 97 was that the Phantom about Menace? 97 was the Phantom Menace so it was a bit, but not, not even 15 years really not not even that so well, yeah no, that was 20 years no since 1983 since the end of return 1996 of the 1996 it was 20 years ago Oh yeah, from now. For, oh right, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm kind of from the original trilogy, from, oh, right. from, the, you, from the end of the Return of the Jedi, and how how everybody was kind of like ready to kind of get into it again. 
Um, but I think a lot of people who didn't understand why they didn't like it, they felt lost. They needed to kind of figure it out. And we didn't understand it. We didn't understand why we didn't like it. Um, I did. Just... <laughs> it was a bad film. Yeah, but the, the, the first thing that jumped out was this whole Jar Jar thing. And then that that became the first thing that everybody talked about for the for the first decade. Yeah, but for me it was things like um, when they first get to whatever planet it was, they do this thing where they have to get to another. You know, um, I can't even. They have to go through hoops in order to get. No, to it was. Um, what are the characters called? The two Jedi's in the Phantom. Qui Gon, Qui Gon Jinn, and Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah. And they they do this run like incredibly fast. Yeah. To get to a place, remember that? Yeah. And then later on in the film, when Qui Gon's fighting Darth Maul, and Obi Wan's behind those those energy fields, yeah, why didn't you just do the fast run thing then? That's the things that bothered me. It's that it's inconsistencies, inconsistencies. yet again. It's, it's basically setting up rules for the world that you're trying to betray and then then ignoring them flat yeah. out. Um, that that is the problem. That I mean, George Lucas simply had a had a messed up mind with it with it and uh but we yeah we, we were watching this and we were kind of thinking well it, it, it can't get worse so the the attack of the clones came out and uh it which was not as bad as phantom menace but it still didn't make us feel as though we were home we were still having all these conversations about about the uh, people were basically just sitting there doing uh, talking about it and not doing anything about it it was basically like the republican and democrats um, um debates mm. that's going on now it's it, it they're basically looking like star wars but I think we can say that they're on track now. Now, but yeah, I mean, once Revenge of the Sith uh, came about, that they just packed it so solidly that you didn't know what the hell you're watching. It was like watching um, Michael Bay tipping out his toolbox for the Transformer movies. It just became too clustered, and it was a clusterfuck of, of crap. Yeah. But now, you know, finally, I think we've managed to figure out what what was actually wrong with the prequels by watching the new. J.J. Abrams, uh, Star Wars. Mm. See, I think J.J. is really good at doing the best of directing. Yeah, all the things you like out of a film, he can put in. Yeah, he knows and... how to. He knows how to 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 push the buttons. Yeah, yeah, and because um, yeah, you could say essentially is a New Hope. It is, um, but I suppose it's more than that, you know. And um, yeah, it was all right. It was. It was. Um... I think the topic of today is feminism. Because Quite possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah you're Spice right. Girls about feminism, obviously, um, the Green Inferno tried, Had, yeah. tried to deal with subjects but failed. Like that, but failed miserably. Um, a new Star but Wars. This one, the main person in it is a female. Yeah, and the one who's a, probably going to be a, the next Jedi is a female Jedi, which I think is great. I, I think really it's like great. That. And I think you, she was the best part of the film. She was. And she still is. I mean, every time you see her in, in any clip, you kind of think, "Wow, look at yeah, her!" She was good. Doesn't she look the part? I mean, she you kind of you can feel that she, she every single scene she, she's where she needs to be. It's, she doesn't have any green screen um, daisiness. No, that's no. funny. Her name is Daisy, um, but uh, she, the, the, she doesn't have the Natalie Portman. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, look about her. She knows what she's doing. Do so you think like? I, when I watch a film, I want to be subverted. I want to go, oh, I didn't expect that. Yes. And at the very beginning of this, I thought it was going to be like that. Yeah. Because you know when it... I f when... I'm really bad with names. What's the bad guy called? Uh, Kylo Ren. Where Kylo Ren, when he... Stopped, I'm good at this. Yeah, you are. When he stops that laser beam, and then you've got the pilot, who's a really good pilot, and he's on his knees. Yes. And they both look at each other, and he goes, do you talk first or me? Yeah. I went, great. Yes. This is a film for me, because... At that point, you're expecting something menacing, and then he, out of uh, you know, out of left corner, he's like, "Are you going to talk to me?" And I thought that was funny. That was good. I like that. No, I his, want more of this. His name was I can't remember his name, but he was the the pilot. Basically, we'll just call him. Is, is the that pilot. Oscar Isaac? Uh, yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's, he's a, such a great actor. And, and, and I think he have was next Machina. Uh, yes, I have. Oh, he was in that, and it, he's that. A, he's a chameleon. Yeah. He really is, and I, and and I think in this film, I really gravitated to his character, and I didn't think that uh, that kind of character I would um, ever gravitate to to that that kind of a person. But oh. he was really really good. I think the three new new people, uh, Finn, Ray, and Pilot, yeah. um, were were a fantastic addition to the Star Wars universe. I think they really all they all of them canon. 
yeah. Star Wars canon. Oh, the canon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the oldies were fine. But the thing is, as soon as I left the cinema, I mean, I was I loved watching it and I was excited and it was it was a thrill ride. It was a ride to, to just sit there and watch it. But as soon as I started to think about it, R2-D2 having the map in him all the time and just I'm having just that little piece of the, that one point. And that little piece of jug, jigsaw if if R2D2 had actually shown them that entire map with that little gap missing then they'd have an area to explore mm. they'd say well this piece is missing let's go and have explore that you know and surely it's not that big a vast an area that they couldn't actually pinpoint where all the planets are that were it's actually, the same thing if you start yeah. to think about it you start it, to, you go yeah. oh, I I'll be honest I was picking them all out while I was watching it. Yeah. I wasn't in the film. I like, was... Like with Age of Ultron, I watched the film and I was in the film and then afterwards I started to pick it apart. Yeah. This, I was picking apart while I was watching it. I See, I, I, I think I was really wanting to just watch Star Wars film without it getting into me like that. And I think that I, I did really well because usually I'm not surface. Usually I'm way down there picking yeah, things yeah. apart straight away. Um, I mean, Age of Ultron had that effect on me as well, where I actually just watched it and enjoyed the the spectacle of it all. But after yeah. walking away from it, it's just another Marvel movie. Um, yeah, yeah. And well, they are. They're, they're all them. pretty much identical, and I, I kind of, I, I, I really don't need to watch another Marvel film. I, it's like I don't need to see another Spider Man film. I don't need to see another Batman film. Well, that's you. I do. Yeah, exactly. I love the stuff. But that, that's exactly it. I, I mean, want to see because we've got Civil War coming next. I want to see how that you've pans got, out. You've got the storyline of the thread. Well, I started I from like, the very yeah. first one, Iron Man, and I've watched them every one straight yeah. through. You've not done that. I've so not done it's that. It's been a so journey I, for me. I'm not in there. I'm not in the journey, um, which is fine. I mean, it, it's good that we both have uh, our different things, but we we're, 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 we're still love David Lynch and we still still love oh, all these yeah. things. Gotcha. I, I think uh, our love of film is is immense and it's it's universal and it includes everything that. Because that... this is the thing, I went back before watching The Force Awakens and watched Star Wars: Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, and I was just like, they're not that good. It's weird because yeah, exactly. I mean, there was uh, such a cultural phenomenon, obviously, but yeah, I'm like, there's some things in not, there they're, that they're yeah. not great films. Yeah. But if you look at the Star now. Wars is just a rip off of the westerns. Yep. Empire Strikes Back, arguably the best one, the best Star Wars film. Yes, but they still had the stupid, uh, stupid scenes That's of being inside say. the creature's mouth. <laughs> is that, so when the second, because like the Force Awakens is essentially the New Hope. So if we take that as cannon fodder. <laughs> The second it will be a rip off Empire Strikes Back. So does that mean like that girl? Is it Fen? Uh, Ray. Ray, Ray, sorry. Uh, but does that mean Ray's going to be running around in like a, a rainforest jungle with Luke on her back doing somersaults? <laughs> that would be great. That's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that, that sounds like fun. Well, it actually looks like Oliver Reed in, in, at the end there. I, yeah. I kind of thought that... Um... It went on way too long. It did. It's like, okay, come on, take it. I'm embarrassed yeah. now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but it, the, the funny thing is, what, he, was he expecting her? Because he looked as though he was just peeing over the side. After having a really good drinking binge, is, and, that, is uh, that all he'd done? He's just looked at the ocean for the past. Waited for the yeah, yeah. It's like a character in a in a game when you actually leave the scene, and then a few you know a few days later you go back to that, and he's the, the characters are all still waiting mm. for you as if they haven't done anything. Because that was that was another thing that annoyed me when they were talking about oh Luke and Leia and Han Solo. Oh, that's real. Those guys are legends. I'm like, it was only thirty years ago. I mean, it's uh, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's it's odd. They they, yeah, they you know what do, I mean? that was, I know that was people... more fan service, I think. That was that was towards us, you know. You reckon? Everybody who watched the original Star Wars, trust me, it, it was all it was all right. And they were just trying to make make, make them true. feel as though it was it was good. Yeah. We, the Force, we we loved the original trilogy. Yeah. The Force, the Jedi, it was all true. It was like, all true. Of course it was only yeah. true. And that was the, another thing that bothered me is everything that happened Star Wars and Fresh Empire Return of Jedi had no it's made no difference. No difference. It's still, the rebels still seem to not have much money after hide away, yeah. and the empire or whatever the bloody called now, mm-hmm. at the new order, still it's, making it's still got all the money they can make a planet, death stars. A, a death planet. Yeah, yeah. But but it, it, instead of building death stars and death planets, they could be using. They, I don't understand why they need to build these things because they might as well just build an army to just destroy everybody and, and stop building huge constructs. <laughs> They could literally which just... harnesses the power of a sun. Yeah, which is and just then what happens whatever. when the, the well, they have to go to another sun? But can the planet survive without the sun? Because nothing can survive without 
sun. There are many, but there are many stars to visit. And, yeah, but uh, how? Th- how does it travel? Doesn't the, doesn't the planet just die the moment the sun is extinguished? Yeah, I'm, pretend- I'm I mean, not thinking too much about it. No, no, no. I th- I think that uh, they didn't think anything about it either, and uh, we're li- literally just trying to justify their lack of understanding behind the actual st- the, the, the the construct of what what harnessing the energy of the sun actually really means and yeah like and then are we put in because this was a long time ago in a galaxy far far away yeah. so was physics different then do, do they have a different maybe we've got it wrong it? maybe maybe that's it maybe they know what's real and what's right and uh, they're just making everything going on to be honest if only uh, Kev the alien had come down and tell us if only Kevin Bake was there to save everybody yeah. Uh, but yeah it's, it's, it's just one of those things where you know it is sci- sci-fi it's not hard-boiled it's not hard-boiled sci-fi. It's not like... Would you say The Martian is hard-boiled sci-fi where they're actually trying to put actual science in there? I think they are, but then there's there's no storms on Mars as far as I can understand yeah, it. Yeah, that's and it. Things yeah. like that. There's, there's, there's kind of things always. I mean, even Prometheus, where where they just happen to land at the time when there's the most devastating storm that destroys everything. Yeah. Actually happens, occurs. Uh, so coincidence aside... And just a Prometheus point, if there's ever like something really big that's fallen down... Just, just walk to the side. You don't have to run away from yeah, it. Yeah, you don't have to actually try and outrun. Yeah, you just walk to the side and you'll probably yeah. miss it. Unless you really, yeah, unless you really are a gamble. Yeah, unless you, you want a bit of excitement Unless in your you've life. just logged into the dark side of the internet and you want everybody to watch you get squashed. Yeah, that's fine. you've got a webcam on you. Say, watch yeah, me. Watch me. Does it, will I survive or will I not? For you know. Chan, check it out. <laughs> yeah. So, you mean, Star Wars is Star Wars, and it's always going to be there, and I think that um, Disney know know that um, no matter what, people are going to swoop in and watch it yeah. ten times. The thing They're I loved about it toys. is Han Solo was having, Harrison Ford, sorry, was having a great time. He enjoyed himself. Yeah, he really, and I think it's because he knew he was going to die. Yeah, and uh, of course that that doesn't stop everybody speculating that he actually he's isn't dead. dead yeah. That it's actually a big uh, conspiracy as to and Luke and Han haven't actually had the scene together, and they want to be able to have that um, you know in the next one as the big reveal that he actually isn't dead, uh, because he's actually cast in the second film, which is not a very good surprise to keep it. But the, it could be like backstories. It could be like flashbacks. Star Wars like has that. never done flashbacks. Maybe it's time. Maybe that's something that JJ is going to break um, the convention of Star Wars. I mean, well, JJ is not directing the next one, though, is he? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. on, and I think that's a good decision. Well, it's the, it's the Star he's put, Wars. He's, he's put him on the right plan now. Yeah. Someone else. That's do what it. George Lucas did. I mean, Irvin Kershner and uh, uh, Mark Wand. Mm. Richard Mark Wand. <laughs> Both deceased rest their souls um they they both did a better ver- well was star with the original star wars was still great but you know it's star wars and uh you know there's there's like a million reviews out there about star wars which is probably why we haven't really wanted to do this um but it's, um, it's, it's why we talked about the green inferno and, and spice, spice world, world before <laughs> star wars yeah but i i think it's been fun to to kind of just pull all these different threads together and uh to just but there is no connection between any of these movies other than the feminist feminism, uh, feminism. um it, it, interesting that you brought that up because there's been this whole controversy about uh or controversy as they say in the rest of the world um <laughs> about um ray's action figure not being sold um, in the first wave of, of, of action figures, because they're selling them in waves, by the way, so that uh, people... Is that could... the wash on show? No, the, uh, it, it's payday waves. Ah, so basically, they they the only put so, they only put so many out there so that people who have payday, they kind of estimate how much uh, um, extra money they're going to have after they pay the bills uh, that they're going to spend on action figures. And they have, and they do. And it's odd because then the next wave of, of, of figures come out and they, they, they use the rest of their uh, income for that. So they've, they're basically planning everybody's payday uh, wages. So uh, on being buying, that she's the biggest part of the film. They waited until the second wave for the, for the her new action figure. Really? But they had to complain about the fact that she wasn't in the first wave and that it was an act of, of uh, sexism that her character wasn't available to buy. That little girls were crying because they couldn't play with their Ray action figure. Really, that that kind of bullshit. It's it's it, but it's all bullshit. It's just all bullshit. I haven't. I mean, the only the only uh, merchandise I have for Star Wars are these coasters, which I got for about two bucks in Sainsbury's. That's that's two pounds in British talk. And uh, they're just basically the characters. 
Like a holographic coaster. And my son loves them, and he just picks them up and drops them on the floor. Um, but that's the only thing I'm ever going to have. That's, I mean, I actually did have a Kylo... Uh, someone actually bought me a Kylo Ren mug, right. but they weren't dishwasher safe, and it, the whole thing just peeled off. I have a Darth Maul t-shirt that's sleeping. Ah, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's red. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, that's all right then. Well, yeah. I mean, that was the best part of the movie. He was, yeah, he was, he was good. He was comforting. But there you go. The Star Wars is Star Wars. Um, I, yeah, right. I wasn't overly blown away by it, but I'm I not can, now I since can, I've actually picked it apart. I can see why people would love it and think it's the best thing ever. I, maybe I don't know. Yeah, it was. I think it was a good balance of nostalgia and trying to, you know, yeah. revamp it and. Yeah, I like the old fascist regime thing going on. That's, that's always that's always always, 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 good, always good for a baddie, isn't it? And, and I did uh, enjoy the fact that Kylo Ren has tantrums and that stormtroopers have to avoid him. Th- that's that, a part I had to really the, the like. The humor was good. Some yeah, some of the humor was good. Some of it didn't quite hit mark for me, no. but I do think yeah, the humor was good. And I like the idea that obviously in the original trilogy, um, Luke's good and he's trying to stay away from the dark side, but in this one he's bad and he's trying to stay away from the light side which I think in storytelling terms is is really cool it's a good mirror of uh of of themes definitely and uh you you've got to say that uh the the one thing that I that I that I just want to point out is that um we're at the age now where when we were kids Carrie Fisher was like a mother figure to us she wasn't to me I was too young to actually have those I really fun, fancied her did you yeah yeah uh, then, funnily enough, Natalie Portman was our age when she started doing Star Wars. Yeah. But does it mess with your head that Daisy Ridley is old enough to be our daughter? Yeah. I um, Around Christmas, we had a work to do. And we mm-hmm. went out, and Phil, when we made some work, they said, you know, you look around, you could be anyone here's dad. And I was yeah. like, oh, you're right. Doesn't it mess with your head? A little bit. I feel the same. I don't yeah. feel any different. Good God. Let's I'm wrap up. A, I'm a little bit exhausted. So, uh it's it's a been an odd odd podcast but it's been a, it's been fun yeah it's been, it's been it's been good feminism is the way yeah feminism i mean let, let's just let's just give women a chance to i mean let's let's have the equal pay thing i mean there's no reason why anybody should it's be ridiculous this day and age and um and that, let's stop fgm absolutely it's disgusting yeah. practice that should never ever be ever done ever full ever. stop period yeah, it's yeah God damn it. Yeah. So let's end. Um, what have we got to say? Ah, how do we end this? Uh, girl power. Now, Star Wars is also known for having like very strong female characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it like to be thrown into that position and now be like a role model? Um, it's weird because people are already like, oh my God, you're so inspirational. And I'm like, you haven't even seen me do anything yet. <laughs> um, I think the... I. It's not really me. JJ created this incredible character mm. and Kathy before him. Like they they worked together and Larry Kasdan to make this wonderful character. And we have Phasma and Maz Kanata and um, Leia's back, plus other women who haven't even been announced yet who are amazing. Ooh. Um so I'm just I'm just like a facial thing of this whole creation and so many people's work into what would make a wonderful character in the story. And for that to be a woman, and for hopefully that to appeal to to female and male audiences all over the world, is amazing. He's going with girl power. I like it. 